Listen to me. We don't want to kill any of you. But trust me, we will. Wake him up a little! This whole thing is pretty much done. We're more ghosts than people. You have got to keep faith. They will not crush us. Good old Dutch. My best friend. You know how we met? A pair of hucksters trying to rob each other. Back in 78 or thereabouts. You have to love yourself a fire. It's one of the blessings. Sure, we can have fire. And we can have the knowledge of fire. But with that comes the knowledge of everything. Ladies and gentlemen, Ooh. this is a robbery. Sons of Dutch. Makes us brothers. Sometimes, brothers make mistakes. You'll never change. I know that. All of you venerate savagery. And you will die savagely. Stay strong. Stay with me. All right, welcome to Handy with the Steel. This is episode 18, I believe. Um, and uh, it is finally a new day in Handy with the Steel. It is a Saturday. Uh, let me show you the paper. This game has been going on four days up to this day, so this is the fifth day in game. Um, first time this paper is seen. Outlaw jailed. Deputy Nelson responded to a disturbance near the old Dunn Ranch, taking into custody one Joseph O'Connor. A known cattle rustler and bandit. Joseph O'Connor is responsible for the death of Rosie Clark, a woman in the employ of Jezebel Dunn. Wanted bills have been circulated through town by Captain Walker in search of this rascal. And known he's... Well, I don't know what this is. Uh, hopefully he'll send the hangman's noose before long. Um, Taggart Thompson missing. Local mine owner Taggart Thompson has been missing for two days. Local search parties have been dispatched. And then a uh, little adverse, uh, advertisement. Uh, jewel business heating up. The darling of LeClaire is the jewel. The local brother serves cold beer and hearty drinks. Feel free to stop by as I know this journalist will do as soon as this paper is off to press. Um, who was that who just logged off and logged back in? That was me. That was you. Okay. Um, all right. So it is early in the morning, uh, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., something like that. Crow, you've been heading out of the woods back into town. Before you got into town, you and um, Lewin uh, split up, um, and uh, you knew where you wanted to go. Um There is doesn't appear to be too much traffic in the streets right now. What would you like to do as you've returned to Leclerc after a couple days away? Oh man, is it's is daytime right now? It's uh it's early morning. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, if I can uh if I can find a way to sneak in, if there's any way I can perceive to sneak in, uh, stick to the shadows, maybe head to Red Kate's place. Mm -hmm. Does everybody see the oh. map that I've... Can everybody see yeah. that? Okay. Yes. Uh, let me uh, give you some... Spatial awareness here. Where are you, crow? Uh, 
you're up here somewhere coming into town. Um, the brothel is number one. Um, so it's right here where I'm pinging. Um, so it's actually um, fairly close. Um, what would you like to do? How would you like to go there? Would you like to give me some sort of general um, general path? Maybe if I can sneak along that riverbank and then through these trees mm -hmm. and just sneak up into the back area, maybe climb through a window or climb up the back, whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't you go ahead and head that way? And I'll tell you when I want you to stop or whatever. Yeah, as you're passing the sawmill, you don't see anyone in there currently. Um, yeah, I'll stick to the bushes. Mm -hmm. I'll look around to um, huddle down, seeing if anybody's around this area here. You hear uh, like a... Uh, Tink, 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 tink from this building here. Uh, let me get in the right in there. This building here is somebody's hammering something, but you kind of pink in and you see whoever's working in there. His back is turned. I'll kind of head across into these trees here. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Uh, What is this hill here? Connected? Like an outhouse. Uh, if it's possible, maybe climb up the back of the outhouse to get into. Okay. Back um, entrances. Yeah, I think there would probably be a back entrance there. <laughs> oh, there's definitely a back entrance somewhere. Yeah, she sent Joe out it before. I know. Yeah. Yep. Why don't you give me a stealth roll with two benefits? A good roll. Um, let me see. One sec. Yeah, you find the back entrance actually open um, and you're able to head inside. You don't think anyone saw you? Um. Albert, you're currently in the back uh, doing some quick inventory and you hear the, the door creak open and you see the face of crow peeking in oh well, hell crow is that you crow comes in a little uh he's he's breathing a little heavy and uh sweating a little bit and he he nods it is me oh, it's wow. red kate here yeah yeah i'll go and fetch her no, Albert. I'll kind of double check, make sure no one else to look around. Yeah. Yeah. About that time, Doc, you're waking up, um, spending the night here. I believe that was your plan, and uh, right. you kind of mosey out to the bar area. Um, you actually, actually, don't mosey out to the bar. You just come out of a room, um, which uh, you look down uh, the steps and kind of see Albert talking to somebody in the doorway. I'm going to switch the scene where it's more applicable. 
Yeah, Doc comes out and stretches and feels a bit hungover, but not bad, per se, because he had a long, fun night and looks down and sees Albert talking. Doesn't say anything right away, just begins to head down the stairs. Yeah, I assume Albert kind of hears this. Yeah. Yeah. He glances and looks to Krogan. All right, now you get back here and tuck away back in the back room and just try not to have anyone see you, all right? I'll go get Kate. And uh, from there, he'll head up to uh, grab Kate and kind of give a nod to Darrow. Uh, morning. Is it... <sighs> I thought it was evening. Oh well. I'm gonna be starting early today, Albert. You mind setting me up? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Let me just grab Kate and, uh, and I'll see to you. Aye, aye. And uh, he'll then head up to go and grab Kate. Yeah, where is Kate? And she in her room currently? Uh, she's in her room, but she's up because she knows she's got to get things rolling this morning. Normally, she wouldn't wake up this early because they spend late nights, but uh, probably as Albert goes to knock on the door, she opens it and they do one of those, oh, sorry, sort of a thing. Yeah, well. She's in her dressing gown and she's got a piece of paper in her hand that she's kind of looking at as you open the door and as she's opening the door and she looks up from it, you know, startled. Albert. Uh, well, good time, Kate. Uh, Crow's here. And she, her eyes go wide. Crow. I don't know how the hell. What's he doing back in town? Where is he? Downstairs in the back room. Oh, thank you, Albert. Uh, I'm sure you know to keep mum about this. Of course, but keep an eye out. Mr. Darrow's already up and about. Ah, I see. I see. I don't let him leave. I do have uh, things I want to discuss with him. Uh, Darrow uh, or Crow? Well, both. Uh, <laughs> I'll go speak to Crow. Uh, you can keep uh, Darrow busy. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. All right. I'll see you down there. Uh, Albert. Hmm? When you're talking to the doctor, I don't know, chat him up some. Sometimes you catch things I don't, and that man is in the know to a degree that makes me jealous. <laughs> All right, will do. See what I can get out of him. So Kate um, just kind of ties her dressing robe around her, you know, with a sash, and uh, hurries down. Probably still barefoot to the back room. Now we're heads down and out to the bar to start preparing some food and drink for Darrow. Yeah, Darrow's the only person in the bar currently. Um, as that scene cuts over there, I'd like to do the Crow um, Kate scene first. Okay, Kate. Um rushes, well, if she sees Mr. Darrow in the main room, she'll slow her walk and give him a bit of a friendly wave and uh, and then head into the back room at a more leisurely pace. Okay. Uh, you head into the back room and you see Crow. Uh, what is Crow doing as he's tucked away in this room? Crow has his hat in his hands, kind of nervously squeezing it and anxiously looking for uh, Red Kate to peek out at any moment. She opens the door crack, peers in, and then quickly slips through as small a space as she can manage and closes the door behind her. Crow, what are you doing here? You know that people are looking for you. Crow nods tentatively. He's... Uh, says, yes. Um, 
I'm sorry. I felt I should warn you. There are Indians about to attack the town. Many, many Indians. Uh, me and Lou ran into them in the forest when he came to find me. Oh my, that is certainly the last thing I expected to hear. She motions him to sit down on a couch and kind of sits down next to him. Many, you say? How many? Looks around for a minute, trying to think of what to say, and he says, too many to count. And he sits down. You helped me once. I wanted to come and tell you. Ludo did not want me to come here and said I was a fool. He is probably right. But we yeah. were we were attacked by white men in the forest. And Lou sided with you. He did. That man grows steadily more intriguing to me. But he's right, you're a fool. You say I I helped you out. I can barely remember doing much of anything. If my memory is correct, you're the one who helped me with Clem. I I don't understand. You you risked everything to come back here and warn me. She looks at him with a kind of suspicious but confused expression. It's, if you want a reward, I'm sure I can rummage up something. And he, both eyebrows raised at that, and uh, uh, no reward, no. Uh, you, others, they were going to attack me. I will remember that. I wanted to repay the favor and help you. I do not want to see all of you dead. This attack will be very bad. You have any idea when? They are probably watching this place now. It will be soon. Lord Almighty. Shakes her head. Oh, Crow, I can't believe you came back here for this. Couldn't have been easy. I mean, I know not all of the red people are from the same place, but it's still got a feel. Well, not good, but I appreciate it. What are you going to do? I don't know. Perhaps... I could help you fight. Or perhaps I should leave if you don't want me here. She reaches out and just lightly puts a couple of fingers on his forearm. You'd fight? You'd fight here? <laughs> I couldn't ask you to do that. I couldn't ask you to do that, Crow. Rogue, can you hear us? Do we need to try to reset Discord or something? Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, uh, I can hear can you. Can now. Yeah, it's been having several issues. Sorry. Yeah. What was the last uh, thing? I, I missed after you put your hands on him. Okay. She said, you'd fight here, Crow? 
I can't ask you to do that. I would like to help you fight. And she leans back a little and thinks, well, I'd be grateful, but I can't say I can predict what the town's reaction will be. But I'll speak for you. And he nods at that, and he thinks for a moment and, and looks back at her. He says, Prove that I did not have anything to do with the sheriff. He was a good man. I think nobody who's in the know really believes that you did. It's just what they call a scapegoat. I don't know if you know what that means, but I reckon you get the gist. Someone to blame. Someone to put your anger on. I, I reckon if you stay, I might be able to shame them and able to, uh, to support you after this. All right, then. I have to get the girls armed up. Reckon I've never really been under siege before. Maybe I'll put them on the roof. What do you think? Nods. Would be a good position. All right, then. She still looks a little confused. I'm going to have to go speak with someone, speak with the law so the town can get prepared. I think some buffalo... Oh, my goodness. What a day. What a day. I think some buffalo soldiers might be coming around for drinks and breakfast. It'd probably be best if you stay up here. Don't leave this room. Nuts. I will stay here. And she nods to him and slowly stands up, kind of tightens her robe around her and just looks him up and down. I don't understand you, Crow. I'm not used to people doing something for nothing. He's he stands up and uh, kind of a question on his face and uh, he says um, you would help me I wanted to help you too and she kind of blushes and looks away you must be talking about the wrong person Crow everybody knows I got a heart of stone and then she uh, turns and walks over to the door. And you just stay quiet in here. He nods and sits back down on the couch. And Kate will exit the room, shutting the door behind her. You exit the door and um, head downstairs. You see Darrow and um, Albert uh, at the bar. Um, Albert, uh, what are you doing? Yeah, Albert would have headed out and immediately gotten some meat cooking up uh, for Darrow, as well as some you know, something simple, some coffee, and that kind of thing, just to get him awake. Probably about this time by now, uh, heading out with it and serving him at the bar. There you are. Well, I don't remember ordering breakfast, but I'm not going to tell you no. <laughs> yeah, think of it as being on Kate, I suppose. Or on me, either works. Best to put it on you. Kate might not like to have that kind of tab. <laughs> He will pick at the uh, food and um, spike his coffee with a bit of uh, bit of liquor and drink it. 
Ugh. So, you know what time in the morning is? And Albert would look to the near clock and check. It's nine. Nine oh five. About nine oh five. Uh, I feel as if I haven't slipped a lick. I have to drink too much. <laughs> That'll do you. Yeah. I've seen plenty of fellas go up there and scarce come back whole. I'm all intact. All pieces uh, working presently. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. I suppose. Uh, I take it you had a good fine time here then. Oh, of course. I always enjoy my visits to the Jewel. Many reasons. Well, fine breakfast is one of them, I'm sure. Should I roll to see how good the breakfast actually is? <laughs> if you want, you can do a career. I would love to because <laughs> oh, his career is trash. And I know he, he's not the best with it. He's trying his hardest, but I know <laughs> Is not leave it point. leave it something mm. random like cookie that you want to roll mm. <laughs> there we go i was like it's fit for him and like his the whole drama of him trying to be like good at what he does for once so. Albert never gets good yeah it, it's not it's not too good the bacon is burnt mm. you know Nor the bread Nor is hard <laughs> and uh he like, oh no, with all due respect, Albert, your breakfast is shite, but the, the liquor is good. Damn it. Yeah, but that's the problem. It's always just liquor. I need to get working on some mixes. Well, uh, I'm sure there's a proper chef in town somewhere you could learn from. Might cost you a penny. You know, that's not the worst idea. Clearly, what I'm doing isn't working. Damn it. Uh, anyway, so how, how's things been treating you, Doctor? Oh, everything's good. Business is good. Business interests are good. Money is good. All of it's very good. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're having a grand time, huh? Oh, all due respect, Albert, your country's ripe for the plundering. Ever since you fellows broke off from the mother country, it's been a boom out here to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Plenty of opportunity in the frontier, that's for sure. Oh, hey, you lot just can't stop killing each other, killing engines, killing people that come from other countries. Good business for someone whose business is trying to keep those being killed from dying. Yeah, I suppose so. It must be. You got any stories on that? I saved anyone from dying recently? Oh, nothing too exciting. I fell with a bit of a snake bite. Upper thigh. Nearly got him in the groin right there on the cock piece, but we were able to get the poison out before it uh, circulated to the blood system too severely. They had to cut a bit away his skin. He's got some interesting scars that he likely won't be proud to show off, but he's not dead, so there's that. Yeah, well, at least you can always pay, right? <laughs> he had to take out a loan, so right. sure hope he can pay, but it's not going to be to me. <laughs> he already paid me the loan money. Well, then. we'll have to see about that, I guess. If I hear any stories from the girls about someone coming in with some particular... Uh, looks about them, then uh, maybe I'll let you know. <laughs> sure. Always looking for good business. As you guys are talking, the doors swing open. Uh, Kate, you're coming down the stairs at about this time, and a man walks in. Uh, Mr. Darrow, you recognize this as one of the men you met in the woods? Um, and he... Uh, steps in, looks around for a moment, spots you at the bar, and makes his way towards you. Doctor, heard I could find you here. K 
Kate walks forward. My, my, this is, place is jumping for so early in the morning. I need to talk to you too, Doctor. And now, but you as well. Hmm. Uh, popular man, so early in the morning. He looks at um, Kate and Mr. Booth and... Uh, you have a need of me there, sir. Again, it, uh, Mr. Booth not revealing his name right away. Not specifically. I stopped by your business and looked for a friend of ours, and he is not there. This was after, or I should say after that, I made the rounds about town looking for him. Not there either. No one on the street or anything that's open knows where he is. He was supposed to stay put. Oh, fuck about. He stands up and... Oh, man, I locked up and... I told him to stay put. I came out here. He's not there. Not there, no. I locked up. Was my bloody door open? It was closed, unlocked, but closed. Oh, fucking shite. He starts rummaging through his bag. And... Kate is actually going to try to see if she thinks Dr. Darrow knows more about yeah, this. Yeah, Darrow, go ahead and roll deception. <laughs> yeah, I was watching the whole thing go down, too. Detect lies isn't my big one. Oh man, Moroli thingy is ooh, not great today, huh? So he seems genuine to us. Yeah, he seems genuine to you guys. Yeah. Uh, that negative, <laughs> that negative three shouldn't be. Uh, he might have hardships that he shouldn't. Uh, he does. Well, that still doesn't matter. I don't think. That would be a. Yeah. He just. All right. Well. I guess I've got some looking to do. That idiot. I ain't gonna make a fucking report with the sheriff's office. Ah. Bloody hell. Yeah. Leave your fucking practice for one night, and some cunts break in. Part, sorry for a language, but some cunts break in and steal your fucking things, I'm sure. Uh, it wasn't tossed. That I can tell you, but... He just shrugs. Maybe he went for a walkabout. I'd figure he would come here. He looks up to Albert and says, yeah, Didn't see a man. A little heavy, big beard. Nervous fella. Didn't come in last night, did he? Albert kind of raises an eyebrow. Uh, can't say I have. I, I don't think we've met yet. Um, Albert Graham. And he kind of reaches a hand forward to shake. He reaches out, shakes her hand. Uh, Mr. Booth. Uh, so what's this about this fella? Uh, I'm good at keeping an ear open. I could do so for you if you want. Oh, well... If you just see anything by that description, you just let the doctor know, and he'll let me know. Suppose I can do that, all right. Mr. Booth, uh, pardon me for interrupting. I don't know how urgent this business of yours is, but um, as it turns out, I'm having a bit of a... Well, I was planning a bit of a, a breakfast for uh, our visitors in town. And uh, I've received some news that's going to make it maybe more of a powwow. Are you familiar with the term? Powwow? Uh, I think it's an Indian term, is it not? I'm um, a bit of a war cancel, I think, is what it means. Uh, but um, I've gotten some important news. And uh, Albert, I'm going to need you to uh, go gather uh, whatever lawman you can find out there. Hmm. 
He he cocks his head. He's like, oh, "Ma'am, uh, are you insinuating what I think you are? I, because I am a lawman." Oh, I'm sorry. I meant the local law. This is town business. But it, I reckon we're going to end up using all the help we can get. What's going on, Kate? Indian attack. Oh, hell. He scoffs a little bit. And how would you know that? And she kind of narrows her eyes at him. I have a reliable source and I'll be talking to the local law about it shortly. I don't like repeating myself, and as soon as I get as many people gathered here as possible... Ma'am, I, I don't know the... if you understand. I am a federal agent. I will to go talk to the sheriff. You can stay here, and we'll see if this report of an Indian tech has any validity, ma'am. You just stay here. Run your business. I'll see to this. How are you going to do that since you don't know shit? He <laughs> raises his <laughs> eyebrows. I don't know yeah. shit, huh? Pardon me, sir, but you aren't from around here. What do People I need to be around that. here to know that there's an Indian attack? Well, it hasn't happened yet. God damn it. He looks over to the doctor. He's like, do you subscribe her laudanum, sir? Uh... All due respect to uh, Mr. Booth. Mary Kate's a fine citizen of the town and uh, quite an important figure within it. If she's saying something, it may have some weight. Though I'm not familiar with it. But uh, no, the answer to your question, I'd not describe her laudanum. Although that would certainly not be a uh, business of yours, Mr. Booth. Albert, ah, please go get a member of yeah. the law. Of course, yeah. I'll do what I can. How long we got, Kate? Honestly, I don't know. It's unpredictable, but from what I understand, soon. Maybe not this morning, but tonight? I don't know. I'm not an expert in these affairs. Uh, Daryl, I have things I need to discuss with you as well, but Albert, uh, take this list and drop it off at the hotel. Um, food and stuff, I'll have them cater to my little powwow. Hmm. Of course. I am very confused, ma'am. You're going to have a party if there's an Indian attack? I'm having a meeting. And I'm treating people well since I was going to have this uh, meeting anyway. He just shakes his head. and You expect me to serve people canned peaches? She just shakes her head. He takes at a cigar and strikes it against the or strikes his match against um, the bar and lights it and shakes his head and well this is going to be interesting I think I'll stick around please do Albert kind of looks a bit concerned about that but picks up the list alright I'll get going quick as I can and I'll be back Albert, as you're rushing off, um, you happen to pass another person starting to come into the bar. Someone you don't really expect, but it's actually the Reverend. Hmm. Well, Mr. Carson. How are you doing? Uh, well, a bit riled up. Uh, you'll want to talk to Kate about that, but... How about you? I've got to get moving on, but... Yeah, there's uh, something wrong. Yes, uh... Like I said, talk to Kate, but it sounds like there might be some trouble with Indians coming along. Oh. He straightens his glasses out and seems a little out of breath already, and, uh... kind of nods to him. Oh, Arston, let me get out of your way. Robert gives him a deep nod and uh, rushes out. Kate walks up to the pastor who they haven't known each other long, but she's always been real friendly to him. And uh, has he ever used the the jewel? <laughs> he, he probably has. 
Or she'll go up to him and kind of give him a quick hug. Pardon my appearance, uh, preacher, but uh, this has been quite the morning. I think we might have an incoming Indian attack, and I'll have uh, all the law in town here shortly to discuss it. Um, gosh, and she goes behind the bar. Can I get you something? Uh, he seems kind of shocked at the moment from from what he's just heard, and um, still trying to take it all in. Uh, whiskey, please. Yeah, I'll Indian. take one of those too. Booth says it's 9 a.m., but uh, it's 9 a.m. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's drinking time now. <laughs> 12 o'clock somewhere. She reaches up onto the top shelf and brings down the good whiskey, pours Mr. Booth some and the preacher, and replaces Darrow's crap whiskey with good stuff. Uh, Jim reaches over and kind of with a shaky hand and takes the uh, the drink. My thanks, ma'am. Booth, he's smoking in the corner and he asks, Who is this source that knows about this Indian attack? Some trapper? Somebody like that? Something along those lines. He's quite reliable. Uh, I'll explain it when everyone gets here. Mm. Rev, uh, you got any combat experience? I know you're a man of the cloth, but I think it's going to be... Uh, everyone's going to need to do their part. Oh. He takes the whole whiskey and... Just, you know, finishes it in one, one hit and... Uh, an Indian attack, I guess I don't have much choice. Well, the people listen to you uh, might need, uh... Did we, uh... Did we get the sheriff already? Well, I sent Albert to go fetch whoever he could find. I know that the law's been a bit scattered here lately. Um, Dr. Darrell. Uh, you should probably... Make sure you're well prepared and stopped for injuries, but um, speaking of injuries, Clem's been complaining of headaches, and despite the irony of Mr. Booth's accusations, I think a little bit of laudanum uh, would not go amiss. Well, that's not a problem. He puts uh, one of the smaller containers on the table. I would give you all spiel up moderation, but I'm sure you've heard me say it a thousand times. You know I don't let my girls get addicted to things. And she takes the bottle and uh, kind of puts it under the counter. I thank you very much. Um, so course. you're missing a patient? Uh, I something I need to deal with shortly here. You say you need to speak with me on something else. Oh, well, it's mostly medical business um, about Clem um, and she'll say maybe you can take a look at her real quick hey shouldn't that be a problem but I uh, yes apparently a mission a patient Ugh. that's interesting I suppose I don't reckon most sick people run away from the doctor Uh, with that, she heads toward the stairs and starts motioning the doctor up. Uh, we gotta get these girls up anyway. Darrow would follow. Uh, she'll lead him into the parlor room and, uh... So, uh... This gentleman from your office is missing. Do you know anything about that? No, not a clue. Really? Aye. Not a single bit of of idea in my mind. Yeah, she's gonna try to she's gonna try to see if he's telling the truth. Yeah, you can roll. Uh, 
What's it under? Uh, detect lies is empathy. Empathy. Oh, there we go. There we go. Well, that's interesting. Maybe things got handled in a different way. Perhaps. I was here, as you saw. Yeah, you left for a little while and came back, but uh, honestly, I'm not terribly invested either way. Hope things work out for the best for Mrs. Stern. Well, if she has her way, they always do. Hmm, well, I was hoping you knew more. You know, I like to be in the know, but uh, if you don't got no more news for me, uh, I will wake up the girls shortly, but I think they're all right. Uh, I'm telling the truth about the Indian attack. You're going to need to be prepared. Um, I don't want word to get out until uh, I can tell the local law, but it's Crow who told me. I see. Uh, by chance, did uh, your uh, your man tell you where they'd be coming from? I don't think he knows the details. Uh, it seems he had an encounter with them, and they told him that they were headed to the town. That they were going to, I don't know, try to take the town out, but uh, maybe he'll share some more details when the law gets here. Hey, that would be good. It would be best to know where they're coming from in order to prepare. Uh, set a good aid station aside, yeah? It's true. Uh, you're going to need to set yourself up someplace secure. Oh, I very much intend to, yes. I will be trying to find a good place to set up whenever we know more about where they're coming from. Might need to set out some scouts. I... I, uh... I was a bit on the outskirts, so I would like to know better sooner than later where they'd be coming from. It'd be useful to know. Well, you're always welcome here, Daryl. I imagine if it came to it, I would seek refuge if you'd have me. Well, I certainly wouldn't mind having a doctor here. She smiles. All right, then. If you ain't got any other news for me, then we uh, better head down. Law should be here soon. Hey, I need to make a report with them anyway. Oh, uh, if you are out, can you, uh, and you see any of the Buffalo soldiers, can you, uh, let them know that Kate's invited all of them over for some drinks and breakfast? Oh, I, I, uh, I'll speak with the Lord and they come and butt me on separate issue, but uh, when I'm out and about, if I on my way back home to check on the state of things, I, I will send them your way. I see them wandering all over the town like fleas on a dog, so reckon you'll run into some of them. Aye, aye. I'm certain I will. Um, Kate will start heading back downstairs. As you're heading back downstairs, um, a few minutes later... Um, as people are getting settled back in, Albert leads um, the mayor into the the bar. I don't know what Albert has told him at this point, but uh... yeah, pretty much the gist of the situation of hey, it sounds like a, a decent number of Indians are going to attack the town. Kate knows the details. I don't know much more than that. Yeah, um, he would have you know mentioned that she wanted to get as many law together as she could to try and figure out you know how they're gonna what they're going to do. But other than that, and I think she had a list of things for him to pick up. Or yeah, just or groceries or whatever. Um, well, she's something to take over to the hotel. She's mm -hmm. going to have them make breakfast. Yeah, yeah, she dropped yeah, that yeah. Off, then yeah off. that's fine. Um, the mayor comes in. He looks around a little confused looking. He looks around. He sees a bunch of people in the bar. What's going on, Kate? Mm, she gestures him over to the back, mostly to spite Mr. Booth. <laughs> yeah, he nods and walks towards the back. He never really comes here uh, except to drink a little bit. He's like, all right, uh, your man says something about engines, so he just shakes his head. 
You remember that man, Crow? The one uh, everybody's been out to lynch? Oh, yeah. He uh, worked out to down the state, I think. Well, that's where he was working originally, but uh, he's coming to my place a time or two, and unlike most folk, I don't treat him like dirt, so he caught wind uh, while he was hiding out in the forest that a very large number of uh, engines plan on attacking the town, and soon. And she shakes her head, heaven knows why, but he got it in his head that he needed to warn me. Well, engines in town. Well, that's bad news, because we got already a situation or two. Oh, gun, or uh, no, he frowns as he misspeaks. He's, uh, Tucker and, Tucker and, uh, Arthur Sexton, new deputy, they're checking on some disturbances outside town. Um, there's a murder yesterday, you see, um. I don't know if you've seen this bill being passed around. This Joe O'Connor, I think his name is, killed some lady, trampled her, and uh, he's sitting in the jail right now. And they're going to look at the scene of the crime, if you will. He also pulled steel on uh, on Nelson. Thank God Nelson did get shots. Luckiest son of a bitch I've ever seen. But anyway, we got that to deal with. Now this. She says, I did hear something about that, but, uh, pardon me for saying so, but I think that this is going to need to take precedent. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to send somebody out to get those two is what I mean. They left this morning. Oh, won't you have, is Crow here? Where is he? He is. I got him stashed in the back. I didn't want anyone to get too excited before people in charge got a chance to talk to him. All right, well, I'm here. He looks around, he's like, who's that fellow over there? I don't recognize him. He nods to Booth. Ah, he's a federal marshal. Apparently, honestly, I don't know why they're in town. But uh, they're concerned that a patient of Dr. Darrow's went missing last night. Try to find out more about it. Right now, it's news to me. All right, well, we'll deal with that in a minute. H have Crow come on out. He can talk to everybody. I'm here. Nobody's going to do anything stupid. All right. If I got your word on that, this man's worked life and liberty, risk life and liberty to come and warn little old me. Oh, yeah, yeah. No problem. Nothing's going to happen. I'm here. And she'll kind of narrow her eyes a little and watch him for a minute and then nod and head back to where Crow is. Yeah, as you kind of walk off, he turns around and meanders over the dock. And he's like, Doc? Just nods and greeting. <laughs> Darrow, tip his cap. Uh, who? She's saying something, that man over there, I don't know, is a federal marshal in my town, not telling me a damn thing about some, about some patient you had? Who's the patient? Well, it was a uh, individual who had me watch over. It was uh, I'm a bit surprised actually that uh, Tucker didn't tell you. I haven't seen him since two days ago. Ah, uh, that might be the reason then. Well, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to keep a bit quiet on it. Mm -hmm. Tucker and uh, Sexton, myself, since I was there, we were all looking about for a Taggart. The missing man. Yeah, know about that. Yeah. Well, Taggart wasn't missing per se. He was with them fellas, a couple of them, federal marshals, apparently building a case against a citizen of the town. I'm sure you can imagine who that might be. I don't, actually. Who are they trying to make a case against? This is done. That... I suppose it's not so surprising. You know any details about that? Well, on my end, I was asked uh, just to keep an eye on him at my practice, which apparently he's gone missing again, this time quite for real. 
Albert's uh, by this point back behind the bar, uh, get some glasses ready to serve people and such. And he's definitely listening on this whole conversation, keeping an ear open on this. Does he seem pretty truthful about the whole thing with this? Um, go ahead and do uh, detect lies, Albert. Because we know uh, he was looking to have a guy go missing, right? So. Or something similar. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> oh my! So go ahead and uh, who's got the highest? Um... I think he's got one more die on it, but we both have the same keep. Go ahead and re-roll. Alrighty, my <laughs> damn! I can't believe that. <laughs> My thing's just taking a minute. It's, uh... Yeah, fine. Oh. Is it going? I clicked it. Oh, it might have had it. Let me try again. If it didn't load the zero by the time I clicked. Yeah, if you go. really quick click through it, it might. I think that's what it was. Oh, man. Not yeah, quite. Yeah, it seems pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, everything he seems to be saying uh, is, seems legit. Mary Hill's like, mm, well, I uh, this is just one shit sto shit sandwich, I tell you. He scratches. Oh, it is quite a mess. Well, I I thank you for looking after him. I guess. I wish I knew where the man had gone. But well, apparently there might have been a break-in, I'm not sure, or he maybe he just walked out and chose not to lock the door behind him. Might have put something on fire with a, a deputy. Well, I, I'll take care of that. Don't worry about it. You just stick around in case somebody gets hurt from these damn engines if they're coming. But it does seem kind of peculiar to me that... <laughs> This man's here trying to make a case against Mrs. Dunn, and then their witness or whatever he's supposed to be disappears, huh? Hey, I was thinking the same thing. It's quite convenient. Yeah, I bet he's thinking the same thing, too. Yeah, let's see what Crow has to say. Uh, one thing at a time, one thing at a time. He passes a cigar over to Darrow. Smoke. Oh, I, uh, on occasion, the guys not always get to have them, but always happy too. Best one over as they wait. Um, Crow and um, Kate comes in to visit you. Um, go ahead. So I guess um, Crow's up there waiting for Red, Red Kate mm -hmm. comes in. Yep. Well, Crow, um, there is a federal marshal downstairs, uninvited, but uh, the mayor's there, and he has promised me that he will not let anything uh, untoward happen to you, and he needs, well, you're going to need to talk to him. He looks at the floor for a minute, and then looks over towards one of the windows, uh, and you can tell what he's thinking already, and... uh. Yeah, she goes forward again and, you know, she puts a hand on his, on his arm. Look, I, I know this has got the potential to go very sideways. If, uh, if that should happen, you do hightail it out of here and, uh, you head straight over to Mrs. Dunn's. That woman owes me. You tell her, uh, tell her I sent you. And, uh, She'll find a place to hide you until things calm down. If, by any chance, her man has returned, that Sticky Joe, and you find him, because he owes me big time. And Crow nods to her, very serious look on his face, and uh, he says... You don't put yourself in danger for me. Well, 
Sounds like we're all going to be in danger enough, Crow. One good turn deserves another. But it should be fine. I know how to cover my back. He nods. Yes, you do, Red Kate. And smiles. Ah. I will go talk to them. Mm, Kate uh, takes her hand down, kind of realizing it's been there kind of an uncomfortably long time, probably, and mm, clears her throat. <clears throat> yeah, I'll lead the way. And uh, she leads Crow down the stairs, walking in front of him. As he's following her, he's going to put his hat back on and try to make himself look as white as possible. <laughs> <laughs> As as you walk down, uh, everybody is staring at you. Um, might seem a little uncomfortable. Um, Mary Hill is seated next to the doctor, and then the preacher and another man you don't recognize is at the other side of the bar. And uh, Albert's behind the bar, obviously. As you guys walk down the stairs... The mayor smoking a cigar. Uh, there's actually three people in here smoking cigars. And he just nods and he's like, Grow, come on down here. Don't worry. Everything's good. I know you didn't have anything to do with, with Gundy. It's all right. Come on. And Crow seems kind of surprised at that and, and uh, nods, keeps a straight face the entire time and she walks down the stairs Kate heads to the bar and she is looking around the room meeting everybody's eyes kind of staring down anybody who's looking <laughs> hostile or crossways at him and she makes a point of going over and getting a glass of a shot glass and pouring crow some of the good stuff and handing it to him he smiles nods to her. Thank you. Kate would probably notice as well, uh, Albert is looking a bit concerned with the, just in general with the fact that there's a federal in investigator of any kind around him. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I forgot Albert's got a pass too. <laughs> yeah, quite quite the thing. Yeah, so he's he seems a bit nervous, but he's uh, keeping it under wraps as best he can as he uh, helps serve as needed. Yeah. Mayor looks over to Crow. Well, I'd like to hear what you got to say. Apparently all of us are about to lose our scalps. He nods and very serious face. He says, there are... You cut out. <laughs> Went off in the direction where he came from. You cut out. Uh, uh, was it to the north? It was to the northwest, yeah. Yeah, Northwest. Um, he said, he says, uh, after everything with the sheriff, I fled the town to the Northwest in the forest. I stayed for a few days. He says, uh, uh, some white men came looking for me to kill me or drag me back to the town. They were killed by some Indians and if he knows what kind of tribe he'll say it uh, the Ute uh, the Ute there are many there uh, ho but hold on Crow hold on hold for me to come with them yeah, just hold on a second now you, you said there's white men that came to kill you and the Indians killed them so they helped you and now you're coming down to help us I'm a bit confused They did help me, but... Did you shoot these white fellas, too? No, I did not. That's technically <laughs> true, isn't it? <laughs> I didn't hit any of them. <laughs> I, hit, I hit one with an axe. Right. Yeah, go, go ahead and give me a detect lies. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or go ahead and give me a deception, I should say. Oh yeah, Albert's listening to this. So I just feel... <laughs> That's what he's here for. This, he exists to the tech line. It's like Zavis and bartender for him. <laughs> uh, 
deception is there under is communications. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that's not too bad for Crow, probably. <laughs> <laughs> He's not buying it. Yeah, he, he tilts his head. Mm. You can't. And Kate looks at him like just shaking her head. <clears throat> I think that's beside the point right now, Mayor Hill. Yeah, maybe. Keep talking. Crow says he, um, he his his demeanor is definitely less uh, pleased than it no, was before. I did not shoot any of them, and uh, and he says um. They came, and they killed the rest of them. And he says, I believe some escaped. I'm not sure. But they asked for me to join them and to come with them to attack the town. I wanted to warn Red Kate. All right. Well, his demeanor seems a lot less polite now. I have a couple questions. So you're telling me that white men came out to kill you. The engines helped you, as would make sense, killed the white men. Then you decided to go against them and come here and help us. I, I just don't understand that. Well, Mayor, I don't think he gives a shit about you. Or you, or you, or you, or you, she says, looking around the room, to be perfectly honest. I think he gladly would have climbed back out that window and headed for the hills after warning me. But I didn't feel that I had the proper amount of information or the expertise to interpret it. And so he's doing me a favor, talking to you all. He came back here for me. Maybe you can understand that a little bit better. I do, but I also wonder if this is a big trick. And she shrugs. Well, you can interpret it that way if you like, but me and my girls are going to be posted on the roof for the next three days, and this saloon is going to be closed. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, we have to take it seriously, no doubt. Here's what I say. Crow. I'm going to send somebody out with you. You're going to help us take a peek and see where these engines are. And hopefully we get the drop of, uh, on them before they get to town. And if they're where they say they are, and we're going to be careful. If you're lying, somebody's going to make a canoe out of your head. Crow nods. He says, I think they are watching us now. All right. Well, hell. And then he nods towards Kate and says, Kate is right. I don't care about any of you. But I do care about Red Kate. She helped me. I wanted to help her. All right. Well, I don't care about your fascination with Kate. All I care about is you telling the truth. And if you're telling the truth, after this is all done more to you you're welcome to go your own way we even give you a little little paper for your trouble whatever like i say you're lying yeah i ain't gonna have to keep you from a mob because i'm gonna be the mob you understand i do all right well i'm gonna leave you here kate you're responsible for keeping him here until i get back you understand I'm holding he you. ain't going nowhere. That's good for him, too. Alright, I gotta go find Tucker and Arthur, and then I'll be back. Mm. Crow kind of sighs really deeply and a little pressure relief maybe off of him. Kate pours he... him another drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he... Don't get too drunk. I know how engines are when they get boozed up be on the floor not worth a shit yeah kind of like all the other fellas that come in my place yeah well keep your wits about you the best you can he shakes his head and just turns around and begins to walk off and he 
looks to Booth and you think, and you and I need to have a talk. Nobody comes in my town from the feds and doesn't give me a what's what. And he just stomps out, pissed off. Kate looks over to Crow and kind of says under her breath, well, I think that went about as well as could be hoped for. And he nods. And he kind of whispers and I didn't tell him everything. But I told him enough. I reckon they don't need to know everything yeah. if it don't concern the people attacking this town. So, uh, Crow, <clears throat> out of curiosity, uh, you said it was the northwest that they were coming from. Yes. Uh, all right. Northwest of town, then. He looks over at him, kind of a question on his face. And, uh, I believe so. That is where I ran into them. In the forest there, in the mountains. Hmm. Good to know. Goes back to his drinking. <laughs> Kate looks at the doctor and kind of smirks, understanding the line of his thinking. Will you be leaving now? Oh! Uh, I don't think so. There's some commotion outside, um, and those closest to the door can see um, a couple men uh, walking uh, closer. Um, you hear over here one of them say something to the effect of, uh, well, there's a party in here. I guess we're invited to come. And uh, you see two men walk in. <laughs> Are either one of them the captain? Nope. Probably not. Nope. Okay. Kate will uh, come forward. Uh, hello, boy. Hello, ma'am. And one of them, uh, they like look over your shoulder and they're looking at Crow and they look a little confused and they look at each other and then over to Kate. Uh, she says, uh, it's a lucky thing you come by. I was going to go try to find your captain or send somebody for him. Uh, we're going to be having a little meeting here. And uh, your boys are, your captain and all you fellas are invited. Uh, the town's going to be attacked. And uh, I figure we might need all the help we can get. Attacked? Ma'am, by who? Youped. Braves engines. They frown and well, there's one right there. Let's get to work. And, and Kate pulls, reaches down to her thigh and says, "You don't touch that man. He's the one who came here to warn us." Looking between each other and like, well, we'll go get the captain. I think. Uh, He's about to mosey on over to the sheriff's office and pay a bounty. Oh, will you do that? There'll be some food and drinks for y'all when y'all get back. And they duck out very quickly. Crow, uh, I reckon you... Uh, you can hang out out in this room if you want, but if you start to feel a little nervous, feel free to head into the back. Crow nods and uh, he finishes that last whiskey off that she gave to him. Uh, he says, I should probably head back upstairs for a bit. All right, then. Uh, maybe on the roof. I don't know. Feel free. Mm. 
There's Please. a roof access from my chambers. And... Hmm. Jill's, it's like the second door on the rack. Well, thank you. He good. whispers to her quietly. Thank you. Again. And she just shakes her head. I don't know why you keep thanking me. Now, Scoop. And he nods and takes off up the stairs. Jim's been watching him the whole time, kind of suspiciously. Uh, sitting at the bar with his whiskey. But hasn't said anything the whole time. Yeah, Albert's kind of over towards the end of the bar, Kate. That. Well, you sure do have him wrapped around your finger, don't you? She just shakes her head, looking genuinely baffled. I don't know. <laughs> eh, maybe, you know, Joe, there was a couple times when someone treated her decent and had no reason to, and it always had an impact. Maybe it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah I suppose it must be. Yeah. Jim raises up his, his glass, you know, and says... Uh... Maybe he just likes redheads. <laughs> she smiles. Could be that as well. Well, he wouldn't be the first one, but he would be the first who did me a favor without expecting one in return. <laughs> no one said he didn't expect something in the long term. But... She looks like appropriately shocked. Abba Graham, you go wash out your mouth with soap. <laughs> I would, but it never seems to stick. Mm. Jim said, okay, Jim. Okay, sorry, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> Jim uh, looks almost embarrassed at this, and he says, um, and he pulls out that flyer he's been messing with. Uh, out of his jacket again, he says, I wanted to hang this up, Kate, for uh, for the girls, you know, since last time I was in here, and you know, just a reminder if they ever need any counseling to come on down to the church and on Sunday Mass. What is it? <laughs> it's a flyer. <laughs> just for coming to church? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know my girls are all church going. Uh, I've been wanting to talk to you about Maybe having after Sunday meetings. Well, yeah, the town can start to think of them as members and not just, uh, you know, the whores down at the jewel. But uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to. They sure do have a lot to confess. I'll give you that. <laughs> he smiles and he nods. Don't we all? Well, thank you. I'll just leave this right here. Uh, maybe over by the wanted posters. <laughs> I suppose that's as good a place as any. Yeah. All right. Um, is there anything people want to do outside the jewel currently? Go anywhere? Um, do anything? If we, I don't know. Mary is probably going to get the bounty. Um, one thing Kate is going to do is she's lining up glasses behind the, you know, in front of the bar. And she, if, if she has to go out of the room to be subtle about it, she will. But she's going to soak a rag in the laudanum. And she's going to rub it all around the insides of the glasses like she's just cleaning them. But she's going to make sure she knows which or which. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anybody does. would really have any inclination yeah. of what's going on. They'd probably just think it of a bottle of spirits, honestly, besides the doctor. The doctor, I guess if you're trying to keep it from the doc, why don't you do a... Um, like a thievery versus an awareness. Sure. <laughs> or perception, I should say. I take it she's informed Albert she's going to do something along these yeah, lines. Yeah, I'm sure so. that we've kind of talked. Actually, I think we yeah. did mention it I last I think game. so, yeah. So, Ooh. thievery. <laughs> thievery would be under, I believe, agility. Or not, mm. dexterity. Yeah, dexterity. Yeah. She did pretty good, yeah. but damn, yeah. nothing gets by that doctor. Yeah, you you notice. She should have a hardship from all that whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I 
the reason that I don't is because I'm so practicing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you notice what she's up to, but uh, you can say what you want or not. Um, anybody else in here want to go outside of the bar? That booth fellow's out of here, isn't he? No, he's 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 still here. Um, Dora would look at Kate doing what she's doing. He'd scrunch his eyes a bit, but not say anything. He would just make sure he keeps an eye on his um, club while he still has it. Finish it. Well, uh, he stands up. I should uh, go make sure Mayor's got a lot on his plate. I imagine he might not have, uh, might not have passed my message along to the law. See if I can find that young fella and report it to him. What's his name? Uh that Nelly fella. Ah, that's the name. Yes, uh, Nelly. The the he's a deputy, yeah. I reckon. Uh, yeah, he's either at the sheriff's office, or I think he goes and hangs out at the inn quite a bit. Uh, I've also got to take stock and make sure nothing's been taken. I know, not been turned up, but uh, may as well take a look. Well, you'd know best. You're welcome to come back for the meeting if it suits you. Oh, I'll be back in time, I'm sure. Uh, Dora would go um, prior to the jail and then home uh, at some point returning. Right, well, we can do the jail scene if you would like. Sure. Uh, give me, let's just take like uh, five minutes real quick. Sure. Cool. Because I need to whisper. Um, some people, some things. Some things for some people. <laughs> so many things. So many people. Yeah, Crow will be on the roof mm -hmm. probably watching. Yeah. Watching the horizon. <laughs> Man, poor, poor Nelly. I just got such a bad feeling coming. <laughs> <laughs> Albert, I feel like if it comes down to the Indian fighting, he might he might do better than Nelly. Because Nelly would go and try and kill him. Whereas Albert would just hunker down in here and, like, just deck anybody who tries to get in. So. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I had XP to spend. I never did. Yeah. That's okay. He's got like 14. That's not bad. Nice. Ooh. Uh oh. Gotta reset my brain for Nelly now. <laughs> yep. yep. Uh. <laughs> Can't have everybody in the same room. It's so hard. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen <laughs> eventually, and I'm gonna be sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> so hard to switch back and forth. Oh, especially with Nelly, because he's so much lighter than Albert. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about getting into a conversation. With yourself. <laughs> Jim and Crow. Nothing's worth. Yeah. Nothing's worth. Don't do that as a player. Oh my god, it's bad enough as a GM having to do it. Get. Ask him to be baptized. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you found God? <laughs> Do you know what a baptism is? <laughs> Don't talk to me about God, white man. <laughs> um, until Ghost gets back. Um, so it's morning. Um, Mary and Nelson, I'm guessing you've slept right here. Um, Joe is uh, in the cell in the other room. Um. Likely uh, still asleep. It's pretty early, or he could be in there. Um, whatever. The door's closed. Um, and uh, go ahead and tell me what this looks like as you guys are now, sitting around. I don't know if you remember, but we kind of left Mary and Nelson last yeah. time with Mary asking a, if he was, a very, he was courting anyone. 
uncomfortable question. Yeah. So how, how did that? That's I mean, you can backtrack a little bit if you want. Please do. Yeah, how how did yeah. Nelson respond to that? Yeah, we can always summarize. It. But yeah, Nelson, um, it was a challenging question for him, and he seemed unsure for the most part. Uh, basically, just mentioned you know he'd been you know talking with uh, a lady down at the inn, but wasn't sure where exactly that was going. So, and then he'd follow up with the it, why you know etc. Um, Why don't you guess his role uh, Just at the mention of okay. another woman, Mary, would seem very downcast. Just she wears her emotions on her sleeve, and she's oh, just making conversation, you know. Just kind of mutters and pours herself a drink. And uh, damn it, I can't remember her name. He Bonnie. Would, given the situation. Bonnie, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't really know much of anything would come of that. It just seems uh, nice as all, but. Hmm. She sort of looks up at him from underneath her lashes with a little bit of a hopeful look at that. Oh well, I reckon sometimes more people get to know each other the better they get on or more they realize they don't have much in common <laughs> uh, yeah yeah I suppose you certainly aren't wrong there he, he's beat red by this point uh, there's no fans or butts with Nelson it's just full embarrassment yeah you probably are quite embarrassed at the same time um eventually you guys just pass out where you sit there's probably a couple cots there as well um the morning comes you have coffee um and you're sitting around waiting for the uh captain to come with the bounty and the door knocks it's uh it's like 9 30 um right about the time you would expect him Nelson yawns and stretches and puts his cup of coffee down and heads over to the door. Kind of cracks his back a bit, having slept in the chair to be more on vigil. Um, at that point, that was when the mayor came and gave you a very brief rundown and ran out. Um, soon after, uh, the doctor uh, is the one knocking on the door. Yeah, Nelson seemed pretty surprised to see him. Oh, well, uh, doctor, uh, come on in. We have some coffee here if you like. Oh, no, I just had a bit of coffee at the, the jewel. Uh, spent the night. Uh, oh. I will come in, though. I mean, uh, uh, oh, doctor, it's good to see you. Mary ah, says. yes, um, Mary Dunn, yes, Miss Dunn. Good to see you again as well. What, what brings you along? Uh, unfortunately, a bit of bad business. I've uh, become aware of the two passerby. Uh, individual come into town that uh, I may have been broken into last night when I was away. Really? It may yeah. just be a case of wandering for someone who is staying at my, uh, my place as a patient, but I did want to put on file and make sure it could get investigated properly. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, it's certainly not good. Um... Hmm. Was this a man of some importance? Oh, just a tub of a man who was uh, staying there for a, a few nights. Oh, I see. Well, I hope he's all right. Yeah, well, uh, our business here should be pretty done soon, hopefully. So uh, after that, I could probably come on down and see what's what, if you'd like. What was this fella's name? Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Patient Privilege can't reveal it. Oh, well, it's gonna make it awful hard to find him if you can't tell people who it is. Indeed. I'm not so much concerned about him. Uh, he may have walked out under his own power. Uh, more concerned about my uh, estate. What with it being, I have quite a few uh, 
drugs, chemicals, things of that nature that uh, would be open to the public if someone were to break in, or if you simply left the door unlocked to the whole general public to come into my estate. Yeah, also kind of realizes with that. Yeah, you you don't think they stole your medicine, did they? <sighs> well, unfortunately, I've been back to find out. It's been a a bit of rough business. I'm sure the mayor came by and made you aware of passing. Yeah, his face hardens at the subject. Yeah, those goddamn engines. Uh, well, we'll put them away, that's for sure. Get them all to the grave if I care. Oh, I sure do hope you got your mess in all right. I reckon we might end up needing it. Yeah, oh. really? Oh, what timing? Well, I'll be After down as this, soon as all our stuff's taken care of, I suppose. Straight out of fire pan and frying pan and into the fire for you, Nelson. Yeah, really. He kind of looks a bit, kind of a, a swash of feelings over him. You know, kind of anger at the whole idea of the Indians attacking, and uh, and then the you know disappointment of now there's another thing on top of it, but also the sorrow remembering everything that's happened with Gundy in such a short amount of time. It's almost hard to read him. He's so. He doesn't look like he's even sure of himself how he feels at this point. Huh. Well, I imagine you'll be waiting to collect the uh, proper payment for this uh, beast of a man. And points over to Sticky as he's in the cell. I will uh, be waiting at my home, taking inventory and uh, doing what I can to figure out what might have happened. Yeah, yeah, of course. Best of luck to you, Dr. Darrow. Do be careful with these engines coming. I'll try and get along as soon as I can. Oh, I'll be I'll be just fine, I'm sure. Just head on. Yeah, well, you take care of yourself, deputy. You miss done. Yourself, Doc. <laughs> must give him a nod and let him out. Open the door for him and everything. And... Once he's uh, out, Nelson will kind of sit back down and let out a pretty heavy sigh. It's just one thing after another, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly seems like it. Well, I'm going to do my part. I'm not really from the town itself, but uh, I'm not going to let people go shooting it up. Or whatever they do. Well, I'm certainly glad hops. to have you. Uh, as good of a shot as you were back before. Mm, she blushes. Well, I... I think I got a... I don't know if you can call it a gift, shooting people, but um, if it is, maybe I got it. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, just about all I'm good at, I suppose. So, hopefully it is. Nah, you're good at more than that, Nelson. You're just good at being good. Don't come natural to everybody. Myself included me. Ah, oh, no. Nah. Nah, you're an angel, Mary, I'm sure. Mm, she looks like uncomfortable. I ain't no angel, Nelson, but I, I do try to do the right thing. Just aren't always easy to know what that is. Yeah, Nelson kind of looks to the table, takes a sip of his coffee. Yeah, yeah, I suppose I get you on that. He kind of scratches his head. I I try to do what's best, but you know, with the way things have been, because all you can do really nowadays is follow your gut, right? And she nods. Yeah, that's true. You know, I'm going to have to find out the truth one of these days. That's going to eat me alive. What my Rosie said about Aunt Jessa. Yeah, I imagine that'll be hard. Well, I'll be along to help out if you need, though. I know you would. Might be something I have to do on my own. We'll see. Nelson just nods at that. Yeah. Well, hopefully, uh, 
Um, and what was he? A captain? Yeah, leader captain. of the Buffalo Soldiers. Mm-hmm. Uh, hopefully, captain gets along soon, and we can uh, get you your money and get this all behind us. And then, well, move on to the next thing, I suppose. There's got to be something nice up the road past all this. She gives him another kind of bashful look up under her eyelashes. Yeah, Nelson kind of uh, notices and uh, goes red again himself. And uh, kind of leans back, uh, adjusts his chair so it's kind of uh, so it can see her in like the whole room and he kind of looks out the window a bit. Leans his head back against the wall and breathes for a moment and then kind of looks back to her. All those, uh, well, that stuff you mentioned yesterday, yeah? Yeah. Why, why'd you ask me that? If you don't mind me asking, you know, proper. She just looks away starts um, picking at any dirt under her fingernails doesn't really look straight at him I just well you can't you can't blame a girl for wondering I know well gosh darn it Nelson you know I ain't the prettiest girl around but she shrugs we seem to get along well enough he uh he kind of smiles a moment she does the whole oh I'm not pretty thing again yeah, you know that's not true, but well, it's just uh, well, the mayor and the uh, new sheriff. Uh, he kind of goes red again and has his hand over his mouth for a minute. Well, they both think you're quite sweet on me, and they they thought I was sweet on you too. And I, 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 I was just wondering what what's true, and well. Nelson, I can only speak for myself. And he kind of looks her in the eye at that. And? Well, good Lord, Nelson, you're going to make me spell it out for you? He blushes very hard at that and kind of looks away. Well, sorry. I guess it's, it's rude. I'm not... not I, not really good with these kind of things. Well, what about you? He kind of looks to the ground a bit at that. I don't know. I think you're real nice. I think you're a lovely shot. and think you're lovely. And, uh, but I, I don't really know. We've only known each other for a short while. Well, that's true. You don't need to be nice about it. I, I know I pretty much grew up on the ranch and I haven't even really met that many people outside of it. So I probably seem a bit awkward. And I know that you probably know a hundred girls. Um, don't you? You can just forget all about it. He kind of shakes his There's head. There's a knock at the door as you're talking. Right in the middle. And Yeah, he looks like he's about to say something. And then kind of pauses. We, we can talk about this later once we get you your money. Uh, hopefully that's the captain now. And he'll head over to the door and open it. You open the door and it is not the captain, actually. It is... <laughs> yeah, Nelson... Nelson Nye goes pale at that. And she's holding a, a, a basket with a cloth over top of it, and you can just feel the warmth of it. There's something inside, and she's like, Oh, Nelson, hi. I, I was... And she looks over and catches Mary and looks back over to you. And, and Mary, Mary stands up very curiously and uh, walks over. Well, who is it, Nelson? Oh, oh, and he goes just about paler as he can uh, at that point. Not really worth sure what to say. He stutters for a bit. and It's uh, just a friend of mine, uh, Bonnie, you know. 
And he, uh, what, what you doing, Bonnie? Oh, I, I just heard you were over here, and I, I, I brought oh, you come, breakfast. Come in, Bonnie. Don't open the door, Nelson. Let her come in. It's a bit chilly out there. And she looks at Nelson, and then she looks at Bonnie with like a a fake smile pasted on her face. She um she brings the, she steps in and smiles and gives a curtsy to Mary and she's like oh hi miss and she passes over the basket to Nelson she's like oh I'm I guess uh, there's only uh, I only brought enough for one unfortunately oh well I mean that's all right we can always make more uh, I think we got a stove out back of some sort oh some that's boy. all right Nelson you eat that I don't. I don't reckon I'm keen on sharing, she says. <laughs> Nelson kind of balks at that and uh, places it on the table. Well, well thanks, Bonnie. It's mighty nice of you. She uh, smiles and kind of lingers for a minute. This, uh, well, that's... Anyway, I heard there's a big meeting over at the Jewel. I didn't know if you're going to be yeah. there or not. Yeah, Nelson kind of staunches himself at that, you know, thanking God, you know, a little prayer in his head for a different subject. Uh, yeah, 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 it's uh, quite bad, it sounds like. It sounds like may there might be some trouble with engines coming towards the town. Oh, that's, that's just terrible. I was wondering, well, I was wondering if you could just come over to the hotel beforehand, maybe have a chat. Mm, uh, I, I suppose, but... Uh, something happened as well with a person going missing and someone breaking into Mr. Darrow's. Uh, uh, doctor, I should say. Uh, okay. Well, she kind of puts a hand on your shoulder very briefly and she's well, I'll talk to you later, Nelson. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll talk soon. Don't worry. Uh, just come over by the hotel. And she smiles and curtsies and looks over to Mary and gives a fake smile and turns around and walks out leaving the basket there yeah Nelson has a rather broken smile on his face as he kind of nods and sees her out and uh, kind of only hesitates to look at Mary and rather uh, ends up kind of plonking down into the seat again and kind of thunks his head back against the wall quite soft well not softly at all just looks at the ceiling for a moment. Well, she seems nice. <laughs> he kind of stares daggers at her for a moment. <laughs> I swear, it's just God above trying to punish me every day. <laughs> that Mary cracks a smile and starts to laugh a little bit, shaking her head. <sighs> Nelson Ward. What are we going to do with Well, probably throw me out in front of some Indians to get shot, I guess. <laughs> we'll Could find seem out a mercy. <laughs> well, I certainly prefer to this kind of thing. <laughs> and he kind of looks like his mood is lightened a bit. Now that Mary's, uh, seems like she's not super serious about it. It kind of relaxes a bit more. Yeah, she... Seems like she's a little hurt, but she's laughing it off. I mean, Milson had mentioned that there was somebody. She's trying not to let it get to her, but uh, she keeps thinking about it. When's that damn captain going to be here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Although, he kind of scratches his head. She did mention something about a meeting at the Jewel. It could be he got waylaid. You might want to go check. It might not be a bad idea. And I say we give it a bit and have some coffee and he kind of looks into the basket. Yeah, fresh made bread and biscuits, <laughs> you know. Mary will actually reach out and take a piece and start eating it. <laughs> Nelson actually kind of sighs with relief at that <laughs> and uh, eats some himself yeah I suppose we eat and 
rest up a bit, a bit longer and maybe go and check out what's going on. Reckon I can't live on coffee. <laughs> I don't have anybody bringing me fresh baked goods. <laughs> yeah. Nelson again a little bit. A little bit downcast of that, but nonetheless kind of chews on a biscuit. And, and just you know, about when you're coffee. about ready to give up waiting, um, door just opens. There's no knock, and standing there is the captain. In one hand, he has an envelope, and in another hand, he has a rope already tied in a noose. Oh, well, captain. I was worried he got waylaid uh, with all this talk about engines. Well, I don't know anything about that. Here's your money. He drops it down See? on the table. Mary picks it up almost reluctantly and starts counting it. You ain't heard? Town's gonna get attacked by engines. What you tell him? Supposedly there's a meeting over at the Jewel. Nelson was about to head over there. Look for you. I think they want all the lawmen. I ain't heard anything about that. Well, Nelson kind of looks to the envelope that Mary's going through and then looks to the Captain. Thanks again, Captain, for for this and all that. You know, waiting to today means a lot. Yeah, well, you're a northerner. Fought for the Union. I owed you that. Nelson smiles and gives him a soft salute and, well, let me take you on back to him and you can get him off our hands well hold on ain't it his job to protect all us citizens from engine attack I mean they're they're federal soldiers am I right is he gonna go fight some engines dragging around old Joe on a noose <laughs> Nelson actually kind of smiles at that idea <laughs> I can't say I would mind if he did I just think it might throw his aim off a little. Well, if what he said last night was true, I don't think that'll be a concern, will it? He kind of looks to Captain Walker at that. All right. Damn it. Give me back to money. Mm, Mary looks down at the envelope that she just finished counting. Yeah, there's seven, there's well, $750 in there. 250 more than he said there would be. Well, you can. Oh. Yeah, let's just get him off our hands and. Well, yeah, Captain but. Washington. Nelson, they gotta stick around and they gotta help the town. I don't mind helping Nothing. the town. If engines are gonna come, then they're gonna come kill us all anyway. But, gonna have to have the money back until he's in my hands. Nelson looks to Captain Walker. I don't suppose, if, I mean, if you wanted to just take him out and do what you said you were gonna do, then. You might as well, to be honest. It's, if engines are coming, we can't really spare anything. Well, we don't know when they're coming. They may not have time to go out of town and perform an execution or whatever it is he's got planned. And it sounds like he wanted to take his time anyway. She kind of tosses the money back on the table, kind of angrily. Fine, you take your money. Consider it a down payment on the safety of all the people here. Just go find out what's going on. Uh, Nobody's going to tell me anything. I'll bring the money back when Joe's in my hands. He ain't in my hands, you don't get the money. Nelson, that, that lets out a pretty heavy sigh. All right. Nelson, I know nobody else is going to tell me nothing. Why don't you go over to that meeting too I'll keep an eye on things here Joe ain't going nowhere I ain't even going back there to talk to him no no you stay with him captain says I don't want I don't want him to get free he's he's slippery that one keep an eye on him isn't that what you hear you I are the law right Nelson nods yeah yeah deputy all right, will you come back and tell us what's going on? I will. I'll come right back, and hopefully I have time to string him up. He calls into the other room. You hear that, boy? I'm going to get you soon. going to get you. 
Yeah. Yeah. Man, you were right, Mary. One thing after another. Uh, all right, well, good luck, Captain Walker. Uh, I look forward to seeing you again. Hopefully we can figure out what's going on with these engines and take care of the problem. Get him taken care of and resolve all this nonsense. All right. Well, I do thank you, Deputy. Ma'am, he tips his hat and turns around, stuffs the envelope back in his jacket pocket. Mary just kind of watches him as he leaves and then she uh, sits down with a kind of a flop onto the chair and takes an angry drink of her coffee and Nelson kind of looks to her kind of looks to the back and then heads over and sits down himself god dang it can it Nothing can ever be simple. <laughs> yeah, I certainly don't think it can. Not with the way things have been lately. Well, I'm going to be keeping my eye out that window. If I see engines, I'll haul it. Yeah, Nelson will actually reach up and grab his rifle down and sit on the table and... I suppose we best be ready, just in case they get here sooner than expected. Uh, hell, I, I wish I knew when to expect them. Got my blood boiling, just waiting. <clears throat> Mary just shakes her head. Some part of me's looking forward to it. Nelson uh, almost looks uh, conflicted, more ashamed than anything, though. Well, I can't say I don't feel the same. She smiles a little. Why well, aren't we two peas in a pod? Nelson blushes hard to get at that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Pours a little bit of whiskey into his coffee and then continues to eat and drink for now. Yeah. Unless something else is going to happen here, we can probably... Scene. Yep. You guys are waiting for something to happen, and um, I think uh, yeah, we're gonna do this now. Um, so would what would have the would the doc come back to the to the jewel? Um. Yeah. After checking, you know. Making a uh, a trip to his estate mm -hmm. to check on things. Yeah. He would come back. You, you check on some things. Um, the uh, what what's there, what's not. We can do off screen if somebody robbed you or not. Mm -hmm. um, maybe an hour later. There's a bunch of buffalo soldiers in here. Um, the one thing that is apparent is the mayor's not here. The sheriff's not here. None of the deputies are here. Um, just Mr. Booth and the Buffalo just the, soldiers. Yep. Um, kept and the preacher. Yeah, and everybody who's here. Um, and there, there's probably some other townsfolk here. Um, Captain Walker uh, does relay to you that uh, he spoke to um, Deputy Nelson. He was staying there to guard the prisoner. Hmm. Kate. And looks around. Uh, she's every now and then been shouting abrupt orders to the girls who are probably you know, kind of fluttering around. Not as, uh, you know, they've been in dangerous situations, probably down to the last girl, but uh, they, they're definitely nervous. But she's, you know, telling them to make sure that they've got all their weapons oiled and loaded and she's probably going to send send them all to take turns going out in the balcony and the roof looking around um eventually when the the food arrives from the the inn she'll think to herself well i can't really hold off much longer 
and she'll start uh, having it passed out and she'll start pouring drinks. She makes sure that the special drinks go to the Buffalo Soldiers and um, she thinks on Mr. Booth, uh, but she gives him a normal drink. Yeah, can you roll me a perception? Anybody who wants to can. She doesn't pour anything extra into the drinks because she's already got the glasses ready. Yeah, Albert's of course watching everything, so. Once the thing loads. <laughs> All my buttons are slow today. Oof. Oh my gosh. Oof. Hi. <laughs> I'm going to increase that for Albert. I thought I had Sorry, it high. I rolled twice. Yeah, it's fine. Hmm. Mm, Kate, are you going to roll? Oh, oh, me yeah, too. It, yeah, 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 if you want to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Anybody who wants to. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, everybody's there that seems to going to be there, so. Um. Well, she'll start pouring drinks and make sure she uses the good stuff, obviously, and she'll, like, tell everybody that they, to, to uh, so they appreciate it and maybe ask for more. She says, well, I think the mayor is off hunting up the sheriff and uh, his other deputies, but, um. From what we hear, we've got youth soldiers going to attack. And she looks over at Captain Walker. I was originally going to invite you over for re another reason entirely, but uh, seems to me that you've got quite a bit of experience fighting engines. Yep, yeah, got a bit. I did hear. Um, well, let me ask you, what were you going to have me over for, ma'am? Well, heard you caught your man. I was going to have a little talk with you. And uh, I know we didn't get exactly get on at first. Might have explained some things. And, uh, well, just as a sign, as letting bygones be bygones, I hear that y'all been doing some work on the new Civic Center as well. Yep, Sheriff asked us to strip up our boot heels and work for pay. And so we have. Oh, I do know. That pay's been coming out of my coffers. Well, my boys and I do thank you. We'll stick around till it's done since, well, hopefully we fight off these engines if they really are there. And uh, we have our caught our uh, fugitive and so we'll be out of town soon after well congratulations on that hope he didn't give you too much trouble oh well not too much trouble I didn't actually catch him it was that the deputy oh that's right I did hear something about that well regardless you all seem pretty keen to catch him, and uh, can't say uh, can't say I blame you. Yeah, well, what I was gonna gonna ask you was, why were you tearing down the bills? One of the miners did say that you were paying them to rip down our bounties. And she kind of grins widely at that, pours herself a drink, takes a drink. He spoke true. Uh, I suppose I do owe you some sort of explanation. She motions to a table in the back, picks up his drink, her drink, takes it over there. But it's an explanation that's going to have to be private. He looks around. I'm not drinking, ma'am. 
but I'll walk back there with you. He walks back. Um, he looks on edge. She just, I mean, she's not leaving the room. She's yeah, yeah. sitting him mm-hmm. down at the table. Mm-hmm. She s- takes his drink anyway and sets it in front of him. Not a drinking man. Not one I'm about to fight buffalo soldiers, no. Or, I'm sorry, uh, braves, no. Ah, well, I figure most men need a little liquid courage. What I've seen, no, those engines can't touch it. Uh, she nods. Well, hope you don't mind if I partake. Not at all. And she- and she takes a good swig of hers and sets it down. Now, I'm about to tell you something that's honestly none of your goddamn business, so I trust that you'll keep your mouth shut about it. It ain't uh, nothing illegal, nothing really relevant to anyone else. It's just personal, you understand? He, yeah, yes, ghost, and he just stares at you. So, uh... Yeah, I was having men take down the posters, and here's why. I was worried that uh, this man, he'd walk into town, see them posters, and he'd ride right back out, never to be seen again. Uh, instead, I was hoping that he'd mosey on in here first, as my place is the first place most men go. And she takes another drink. Remember, you asked me if I recognized that. Yeah, you lied to me. I did, but like I said, it's really none of your goddamn business. Uh, I encountered this fella. Didn't really know his name. Knew he was a soldier in the Confederate Army. A couple years back, uh, I was plying my trade, which was not quite so glamorous back in that time. Those were hard times for all of us during the war. Well, uh, those Confederates, they came to town and decided they needed to protect us all. Uh, Decided to take everything they saw that they wanted. And, uh, well, this hair can be a blessing and a curse. Uh, It makes me stand out. Well, needless to say, I spent an uncomfortable three days of unpaid work. And, uh, I found it quite demeaning and insulting. I don't know if you've heard, but I don't like to be insulted. Well, I can understand that, miss. But I will say this. Not being truthful, could have got that deputy killed. Oh, did probably get that woman killed, didn't it now? If it, oh, I don't, I don't see how. I, I would have caught him. How'd you do? Oh, no. I think... Probably he reason he might not have come in town in the first place might have been seeing them posters. How would he have seen him? You were taking him down. I didn't get all of them. Anyhow, if he didn't come into town anyway, how's that my fault? That's not your fault, ma'am. Who says he didn't come into town? Well, he didn't come in here. Yeah, uh, so... She shrugs. Reckon he didn't come into town. Mm. Maybe, maybe not. I just would wonder. If he did, well, that woman be alive. Well, perhaps, and I do feel a little bad about that, but maybe, and I have a feeling that you do understand the need to extract your pound of flesh up close and personal, and that was my hope. I knowed if you got your hands on him first, I wouldn't get to do so, but I'm nothing if not a good sport. She raises her drink. You got to him first, and however it goes down, you give him a few licks for me. He thinks about it for a second. He's like, well, I don't see any engines attacking right now if you want to go over to the jail with me I think the deputy would let him out I'd let you pull the trigger on him shoot him in the knee or something 
She says, uh, here in the town, mm, there's another thing that you should know about me, and is that I don't ever get my own hands dirty. She says, uh, when all this is over, and if we can arrange someplace private, leisurely, I might be able to make my way out of here unnoticed. Uh, I just... I don't ever want to get myself caught up in something unlawful. Not unlawful, man. He's sentenced to die. Even if it's by my hand? Not trying to trick me into getting accused of murder, are you? No, no, no. Not at all. Well then, I'll have to think on that. She says, uh, but in the meanwhile... I reckon I gotta put my own personal interests aside in favor of the safety of the town. Other laws gonna be wandering in and they're gonna need to know. Help yourself to some breakfast, even if you ain't a drinking man. Having some eggs and bacon and toast in your belly ain't gonna hurt you none in the battle to... Maybe not. And she uh, reaches out her hand to shake his and says, Sorry if it all came off a little personal before. I reckon that happens to y'all a lot. I may be the one person you ever meet that uh, honestly don't give a shit about that sort of thing. Yeah, well, it's all going to be over soon, one way or another. He's going to be at the end of rope once we fight off his engines. They don't expect that they have soldiers here. Should be pretty easy, I guess. I hope they don't know y'all here. Uh, if it's the same ones that, uh, well, I saw one slung over the back of a horse before. They might suspect, but uh, I, I don't know. They probably ain't thinking on it too well. Well, they're kind of shifty, but he just kind of shrugs and walks, stands up, shakes your hand, walks towards the front of the, um, just doesn't really say much else, and just gets up and starts walking out. As he does, suddenly in the distance, there's a massive explosion. It teeters the building slightly and rocks it. And the camera kind of pans out. And there's a billow of smoke above the, above the town. And it's kind of obscured where that is. And that is where we're going to end it. Sweet. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs>